the Lord's table is an opportunity to confess our sin and, and to forgive others from our heart. Make sure that our life is right with Christ. We examine ourselves okay. as we come to the Lord's table. From Walking in Grace, this is the Straight Truth Podcast, Christian truths in an increasingly secular world. Well, our question for this episode is about the Lord's Supper. Uh, obviously, we see uh, this as a command of Christ, or at least instituted by Christ, and of course commanded by the uh, apostles later in the New Testament. Um, the question is, why do we take it in, in general, but also why is it required for church members, or uh, can only church members take mm -hmm. the Lord's Supper in a church setting? What would you say? Well, because um, we believe that that ordinance was given for the church. It was given to God's people, yes, but not to be practiced, you know, willy-nilly on an individual basis, but to be practiced in its relationship to itself and to her Lord. And that's what you see in the New Testament. You, you see believers partaking of the, of the Lord's table together. And you find instruction that indicates that as they do that, they declare the gospel, so, so, and, and chiefly what it is is a remembrance of Christ himself. Mm. But there's also a message being communicated about the believer's relationship, not just to his or her Lord, but to the rest of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. and I think about 1 Corinthians 11, where Paul gives instruction to the church at Corinth, and, and a part of that instruction is, is rebuke, mm -hmm. because they have misunderstood the Lord's table, and they've perverted the Lord's table in the way they're treating each other. Mm -hmm. So it, it appears in 1 Corinthians 11 that there was, you know, Oftentimes for us, Josh, you know, it's just one moment in a service and you have the elements and we partake mm -hmm. of it together. But it seems in that passage that there was more involved. There was a meal they a shared meal. together mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. But he's, he's rebuking them around the concept of the Lord's Supper by how they were treating each other in that meal setting. You had people coming who didn't have much and those who had a lot had already eaten the food and those sorts of things before mm -hmm. before those people could even be taken care of, and, he, and he's rebuking them for their for the for the message they send when they do that, and he's rebuking them in its in in the, their behaviors relationship to what the Lord's Supper communicates. So what we see in the New Testament is this is an ordinance given to believers to be partaken of in the life of the church, and it's a message not just about Christ. But, and not just about my relationship to Jesus, but about our relationship to Jesus and therefore our relationship to each other. How often should we take the Lord's Supper? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. We're not commanded with respect to its frequency. Mm -hmm. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what the New Testament teaches. As often as you do this, it does appear early on that believers were doing this on a regular basis yeah. when they gathered together. So. I would not think that partaking of this once a year or once every six months would in any way sort of align with the picture you see in the New Testament. I think yeah. it would want to be more frequent than that. There are some who would suggest every time we meet together, we should partake of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that you can make a concrete case for that from the New Testament. Okay. I certainly think that would that would accord mm -hmm. with what you see in the New Testament yeah. record. As often as you as can often, Yeah, as you meet together. Here we partake of it once per month, yeah. and we alternate between morning service and evening service based upon the fact that not everyone can always come to an evening service. So that we make sure we have it in the morning as well uh, for those who only come in the mornings. Yeah. There is a and long enduring question about what is, how Christ is actually present in the Lord's uh, Supper. Mm -hmm. Obviously in a Baptist ecclesiology, uh, ecclesiological uh, sense, we um, have this idea of of of, of uh, the Lord's Supper as uh, memory and 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 as a remembrance, as an ordinance in that sense too. That we are remembering Christ's um, body and uh, and blood. Do you think that Jesus is present in any sense yeah. in the taking of the Lord's Supper? Yes, I do. I mean, the elements themselves, I believe, are symbolic. Okay. So, so there's nothing mystical, magical, right. spiritual that happens with yeah, those transubstantiation elements. Transubstantiation. Right. Uh, the bread turning. is bread. Yeah. The the drink is drink. But one of the one of the 
bits of instruction found in the New Testament and it's associated with the Lord's table has to do with fellowship. Mm -hmm. Around that table, we fellowship with Christ. We, when we uh, go into pagan temples and, and partake of elements of that worship, you're fellowshipping with demons, Paul says. Mm. So there is a fellowship element present in the, in the meeting of the Lord's church and therefore around the table. We do fellowship with Christ spiritually in, in the partaking of, of these elements. It's, it's an act of worship. Yeah. So, and, and we also have fellowship with one another, which is why the misuse of that meal setting in Corinth was so troubling to Paul because we're saying one thing about our fellowship at, at the table and we're saying another thing about our fellowship and the way we're treating each other in the church at Corinth at that at the time. So it, this includes things like forgiving each other from our hearts yeah. and not holding things against each other. The Lord's table is an opportunity to confess our sin and, and mm -hmm. to forgive others from our heart, make sure that our life is right with Christ. We examine ourselves okay. as we come to the Lord's table. So there is a fellowship element to, to this ordinance. So it's self-disciplinary in some sense, or maybe it's um, a kind of a built-in discipline for the church because it requires a reconciliation before you take it. Is that what you would say? You must be reconciled, and if you don't reconcile before you take the Lord's Supper, what, are there consequences? What, yeah, well, let's just, let's just let uh, the Word of God speak on this. So in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul writes, verse 27. Well, let's back up for just a moment to verse 17. 1 Corinthians 11, he says, But in the following instructions I do not commend you, because when you come together it is not for the better but for the worse. For in the first place when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I believe it in part, for there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it is not the Lord's supper that you eat. So, so again, it's, he's rebuking them in relationship to their practice of this ordinance. And he's saying how you're treating each other with all these divisions, it doesn't accord with the message communicated at the Lord's table. This is not the Lord's Supper you're, you're taking, verse 21. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you, commend you in this? No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And he goes on and describes uh, the Lord's table there and the elements and all of mm -hmm. that. He returns in verse 27 to their relationships to each other. He says, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let me just stop there. What he's saying is, you, you are trampling underfoot the true significance of the death of Christ represented in symbolically at the Lord's table. You are trampling on that truth when you partake of that and then mistreat each other. You, you are denying hmm. by your life what you're professing by taking the Lord's Supper. This is a serious matter. Verse 28, let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Now this gets to the question you asked. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say, examine yourself. You recognize sin in relationships, so refuse the Lord's table. Mm -hmm. Rather, what he sets before us is make that right. Make it right in your heart. Purpose to make it right and then partake of the Lord's right table. Yeah. yeah, so this is an opportunity to get these things right. So if I, if I had ought with someone and I knew about it, and there I am at the Lord's table and I've become convicted of it and the Lord brings it to my awareness, what would I do? I would confess that as sin in the moment. I would purpose right then and right there to make that relationship right at first possibility, at first opportunity, and I would go on and partake of the Lord's table because that, encounter has produced what God intended for it to. Okay. Through, at the Lord's table, I've mm -hmm. been purified. At the Lord's table, I've been convicted. At the Lord's table, I've confessed my sin, and I'm gonna make it right. So I think you can do that. Verse 29, for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. You ask, are there any consequences yeah. to not doing it right? Verse 30, that's why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. 
Hmm. I mean, God takes our relationships to each other so seriously, Josh, that if we make a mockery of the Lord's table, we're inviting mm -hmm. a kind of discipline from the Lord mm -hmm. that can include sickness and death. Mm -hmm. Verse 31, but if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we, when we are judged by the Lord, we're disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. He makes clear these judgments he's talking about are not on unbelievers, mm -hmm. but on believers. Yeah, it's a believers. father's disciplining of his children. So then, bro my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home so that when you come together, it will not be for judgment. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. Clearly, the table is for the church. Mm -hmm. It speaks not just of our relationship to Christ, but of our relationship to each other. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to encounter our relationships, relationships with each other and to examine them and to make sure we're not living sinfully toward one another. And where those sins are brought to our attention, we confess them, repent of them, make them right. And the Lord's Supper will have accomplished one of its purposes. One, obviously, the chief is to remember Christ, but you cannot remember His blood and His body and not tie a direct line to how I'm to live. And that includes how I'm to live toward my fellow brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And so it will have accomplished what it was meant to do, which is call me to self-examination and repentance, confession of sin, purification. One of the great purposes for the Lord's table. Last question, because it's relevant for our time, is we were in a pandemic last year mm -hmm. and a lot of churches were streaming their services. I had a family member share a service with me and, and I watched part of it and the pastor led the Lord's Supper online. Mm. And so encouraged people to take it in their homes in whatever form that is. What would you say to that? Can you take the Lord's Supper online? Yeah, not as a, not as a, a regular practice at all. Given an emergency situation like we were under at the beginning, or we thought we, at least we thought we were under at the beginning of the pandemic. I, I think we can say we were under at the mm, beginning of the sure. pandemic. Then that was still a pastor leading his congregation I'm, I'm assuming the online was accessed by church members? Yes, just yeah. church members. So he's, he's leading that corporately, but, but via another means, of course. Should never be the regular practice, but given those circumstances, I, I wouldn't condemn that pastor or that church for doing that. But n not at all to be the regular practice of the church. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels, so be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingandgrace.org.